Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Parallel C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about the basics of MPI. So over the course of this series, we've seen a number of different ways that we can write parallel applications. So we've seen how we can do things manually using threads. We've seen how we can use parallel libraries like thread building blocks, TBB. Um, and we've also seen how we can use a pragma or compiler directive approach with things like OpenMP for parallelizing our programs. Now, another method that we have for parallelizing our applications or writing parallel code is uh, MPI, right? Or this message passing interface. So on the right-hand side of the screen, I have another great LLNL, so Lawrence Livermore National Lab a tutorial on MPI. And here, right, it's got a great description of you know, what exactly is MPI here. So like I said before, it's just this message passing interface. And specifically, um, right, it's, it's a specification, right? Uh, it's not so much a library itself. It's more of a blueprint on what a vendor should implement, right, to create a message passing library. And it's designed to address this message passing parallel programming model here. Now, the programming model itself uh, largely comes from, you know, 80s and 90s style distributed memory architectures. So we go ahead and see, you know, this diagram right here. Um, we're talking about a time where we had, say, Unicore CPUs with attached memory. And then we could attach these different nodes with these CPUs and memory together over some network here. Now, things have moved on quite a lot since then, right? Um, and, and our overall architectures have become quite you know, more complex. So you, you can see down here, we have more of a hybrid style architecture, where on a single node, we have more of a shared memory architecture, where we'll have, say, multiple different cores on a CPU that all share, say, the same memory. But then we can attach multiple of these nodes together, um, which will be shared over this which will have this distributed memory architecture. So things are more hybrid, right? Shared memory on a single node, distributed memory across nodes. Now, despite this fact that we have this uh, you know, more hybrid style architecture, our programming model um, remains a distributed memory model. Now, the underlying actual implementation of things in MPI will reflect uh, and often do reflect right, this idea that we do have shared memory today. Um, but again, our actual programming model, so how we write our MPI applications, is still based around this distributed memory model. Okay, so what we're going to be starting out with today is a simple example here of what, how we can write, you know, kind of our most basic program with MPI, right? Basically, our Hello World program. So there's a great uh, getting started page as well for MPI here and gives us kind of the structure of, you know, a basic program here. So on the left hand side of the screen, we'll go ahead and open up, you know, our basic program here, this MPI.CPP, and we'll see how it reflects the structure on the right. So our structure on the right of all of our MPI uh, applications, it begins with an MPI include file here. Uh, so we can use our MPI, say, functions and methods. So here, right, that include file is just going to be this mpi.h. You can see that both inside of our code and inside of this reference here. Um, you know, then you can see that we have, you know, kind of our serial code, right, after a program begins, uh, followed by, you know, our, our MPI section of our application here. So our MPI section of our code and our parallel section of this program um, lies between this initialization of an MPI environment here and this termination of an MPI environment. And that's going to be done through this MPI init and this MPI finalize. So everything between those two points here is where we do our message passing. Now, there's a couple other very useful um, you know, piece of terminology that we're going to need to know uh, with work, when working with MPI applications. And specifically, that's going to be things like communicators and groups, as well as things like rank. So when we're talking about communicators and groups, we're just talking about um, you know, collections of processes that can communicate with each other. Now, for the more, majority of these examples, we're just going to be using MPI com world, which is this kind of default communicator here, right? And it's this predefined communicator that includes all of our MPI processes. So when we're talking about these MPI uh, applications, we're not talking about, say, multiple threads in a single process. We're talking about multiple different processes that are communicating together. And MPI com world will contain um, all of our MPI processes. Now, within our MPI processes, we have different ranks or these task IDs, right? So our rank is just the ID of an individual process, and that can be useful if we want to dictate specific work to a specific process or a specific rank. Okay, so let's go ahead and see you know, how we can implement, say, a simple program here that prints out some basic information, like um, you know, have just have every single process identify who it is. 
So there's another great page here, and you know I'll, I'll make sure to link all of these pieces of document below the video. Uh, so there's a great page on these environment management routines. So you can see a bit more information about things like MPI init and things like uh, MPI finalize down here. Uh, but specifically, right between our init and finalize, we're going to be using this MPI com rank and this MPI com size function. So we're going to be using this MPI comp size to get the total number of MPI processes within a specific communicator here. So basically just how many processes we're running. And we're going to do that today with our MPI comp world communicator. So just you know, our total number of processes we have. And the basic structure of this call is we're going to call MPI uh, comp size with a specific communicator. And then we're going to fill, say, some integer um, you know, with that value here. So we'll pass in, right, the address of this int num tasks here. Now, very similarly, we'll do, um, you know, call MPI com rank to get a processes specific task ID here, right? So we'll just do this MPI com rank call uh, for inside of our communicator MPI com world to fill our task ID. So we'll just pass uh, the address of this integer here, right? And MPI com rank will fill this integer with this particular task ID. Okay, so that's gonna be kind of the basics of what we're gonna do here. So we're gonna take that information and then we're just gonna print out a string from each process here. So just this printing from task and then our task ID out of you know this total number of tasks that we have here. Okay, so that's kind of the core structure of our MPI applications. We call MPI init. Um, you know, we can pass in, you know, any command line arguments we have through argc and argv to all of our different processes, right at this point. Then we're getting our you know, total number of ranks or task IDs. We're getting our particular rank or task ID. We're printing out which rank we are, and then we're finishing, finishing our MPI work here with this MPI finalize. So let's go ahead and see how we can compile and run this. So we'll quit out of here. And what we're gonna be using to compile this um, is this compiler driver, MPI C++. So we'll just do this. Um, now, MPI C++ is really just another kind of compiler driver here. So if we do something like MPI C++ dash dash version, we see that under the hood, it's really just G++ here. So MPI C++ is just going to help us with uh, linking against, say, all of the different libraries uh, that we're going to need, right? To actually compile our code, though, we're really just using, um, you know, our default compiler, which is G++ 11.3.0 in this case on my machine. So let's go ahead and compile our program here. So we'll do MPI C++, uh, we'll pass in 0 MPI.CPP and call our output executable just something like 0 MPI. Right, and from there, we have our simple program here. Now to run this MPI application here, we're going to use this to helper, this MPI run here, right? And there's another number of different options that you can find, right, by using MPI run dash help, but kind of our basic option here is just this, this dash in to specify the number of processes we want to launch for this MPI application. So here we'll just do MPI run dash in eight, right? So we'll spawn eight pro processes to run this code. And then we'll actually, you know, run this zero MPI. And what we see is that we get a print, right? From each of our different ranks or task IDs. So printing from task zero of eight, two of eight, three of eight, four, six, seven, one, and five here. And you can see if we run this again, right, we might get a different ordering. So in this case, you know, everything ended up being in order here, right? So zero through seven here. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of how we can at least compile and run a simple MPI application. Let's get to something a little bit more interesting. And that's going to be related to our actual message passing. So our point to point communication routines. Now, some of our basic communication routines that we have um, are blocking and non-blocking sends and blocking and non-blocking receives. So blocking send just means that we're going to wait until the message is actually sent before continuing on in our particular rank. And the same thing goes with our receives, right? A blocking and receive will wait until our data is actually received. So let's go ahead and see, you know, a basic way that we can you know, do some simple message passing. So we'll go ahead and open up this one MPI send receive.cpp. And here we have a slightly more complex application where we're going to do different work based on our rank. Now, our code is going to start out exactly the same. We're going to include mpi.h, call this mpi init, passing our argc and argv, uh, which in this case will just be empty. We're not passing in commit any command line arguments. Then, right, we're going to get our rank, right, in each of our different processes here by calling this mpi com rank, right, that's going to fill our task ID integer here. And then we do different work based on our task ID. 
So our task or rank zero here is basically going to be um, our main task that's going to send out work and receive results. And then everyone else is just going to do the work here. So let's go ahead and see what um, our task ID zero or rank zero does. So the first thing it does is it you know calls MPI com size to get the total number of tasks or or ranks that we have um, inside of this communicator MPI com world. So just how many tasks um, or ranks to be spawned. Then what we're going to do is we're going to send a message to each of the other um, ranks that we have right inside of this communicator here. So starting at i is equal to one here, right? Because we're task ID or rank zero. So we'll start at one. So to all of our other uh, ranks, we're going to call MPI send here. And we're going to send one integer to each of our other um, ranks or tasks. So the way that we're gonna do that, right? Is through MPI send here. So we're just going to use this blocking send. So the way that we can interpret, right, these different parameters or arguments rather that we're passing in here is that we're going to be passing a single, so one integer here. So this MPI int type coming from, right, this integer i here, right? So that's going to be the location where we're sending this integer from. We're going to be sending it to our task or rank i with tag zero in the MPI com world communicator here. So, you know, you know, our, our basic, you know, uh, parameters here that we have for MPI send is a buffer that we're going to be sending data from, how much data we're sending from that buffer, the type of the data, right, in this MPI type, the destination, which is going to be, say, a rank or task ID, a tag that we can do, so we can specially tag our messages if we want to do anything special to, you know, differentiate between our different messages we may be sending. In this case, I'm just leaving it as zero um, because it doesn't really matter. We just have a single message that we're sending to each of our ranks, so our tag doesn't really matter in this case. And then, of course, our communicator that we're sending this message within. And like I said, we're just going to be using this MPI com world at least today. So that's going to be the basics of our sending here. So like I said, we're sending one MPI int from this buffer, right? You know, the address of this integer i here. We're sending it to rank i, right? Tag zero in the MPI com world. So that's how we send messages. Now our receive is somewhat similar here. So after we send our messages, we're going to receive our results from our different uh, ranks that we have here. So we sent out our data to, you know, the other ranks or tasks inside of our communicator, and then we receive back results. So in this case, right, our rank zero or task ID zero here is going to call uh, receive, right, to receive our results back. And the way that we can interpret this MPI receive is we're going to receive one MPI int, right, so one integer that is going to fill this, you know, int receive uh, data, right, that we've set right here, right, this variable int receive. So that's where our receive data is going to be stored, our single MPI int that is. We're going to be receiving this data from rank i, with tag zero inside of MPI com world. And we're just specifying this MPI status ignore because we're just not going to care about um, this, this MPI status for now, right? Uh, uh, of this message uh, receive. So, you know, we can see on the right hand side of the screen here, uh, the basic, you know, what these parameters are for this blocking receive. So MPI receive takes a buffer where we're going to store our receive data, how much data we're going to receive, the type of that data, our source, so where we're going to be receiving it from, it, the tag, right, if we're tagging this data, the communicator that, you know, we're operating within, and then the status, which like I said, we're just using this MPI status ignore. We're just ignoring the status for now. So this is built into MPI. And then we're just going to print out our data that we received from rank I here. So that's gonna be the basics of our sender task here, right, or task ID zero or rank zero. Now, what is everyone else doing? So everyone else is going to first receive some data. So you know, all of our other ranks here, they're going to receive an integer from rank zero. So they're going to receive one MPI int that they're going to store inside of this uh, receive variable. Everyone's receiving from rank zero here. So everyone is going to be receiving that integer from zero. We're going to have a tag of zero. Like I said, we're not really dealing with tags today. We just have this single message type. We're receiving within this MPI com world communicator, and we're just ignoring the status message again. So what we're actually doing in all of our other processes, we're just gonna square the value we received and send it right back. So here is where we send back our squared value. So we're gonna call MPI send to send our single MPI int from this receive buffer here, just this integer receive. So we just pass the address of this integer. 
we're sending it back to rank zero or task ID zero here with tag zero in this MPI-com world communicator. And then we finalize our program down here or our MPI section of our program. So that's gonna be the basics of our simple example here. Um, task zero is going to send out integers to each of our other tasks and then wait for results or, and then print them out once we've received them. And then all of our other tasks are going to receive our messages from rank zero, square the integer that they receive and send it back. So let's go ahead and see how we can compile and run this. So we'll go ahead and quit out of here. We can go ahead and call MPI C++ to go ahead and uh, compile this MPI send receive.cpp um, in a very similar way that we compiled MPI.cpp. And then we can go ahead and run this again with MPI uh, run. And then we'll go ahead and specify the number of tasks, you know, say it's eight. And then we'll go ahead and run this you know, one MPI send receive. And here we see we get, you know, all kind of the expected results back in order. So we get, you know, from rank one, one squared, from rank two, two squared, three squared, four squared, all the way to seven squared, right? So we got all of our uh, squared results back, right? And these were sent using those messages. Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for this time. It's a basic introduction to MPI and this idea of multi-process parallel programming and this point-to-point -point communication that we can uh, you know, achieve using this message passing interface. Now, as always, you can find this or any of my other examples at github.com slash coffee before arch, just under this parallel CPP repository. And I'll make sure to link all of these different LL and L tutorial pages below the video. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.